I ended up selling six units in this Maple Ridge pre-sale. And that's where things kind of changed for me. That's where I pretty much stopped cold calling, stopped door knocking, stopped everything that I was doing and just realized social media is what I need to be doing. And I doubled down on social media. In October, I took what I would say was probably the biggest risk of my life. I bought a 1.06 million dollar home, dream home, with a 7% interest rate. And I always had this idea of shooting a listing video in Punjabi, because I knew a white guy speaking Punjabi would probably go viral. I think it would be an easy viral. This video went insanely viral. I think I got 1.5 million views just across my TikTok and Instagram, but then all of these pages reposted it. People were making memes out of it. It probably got well over 10 million views across all of the pages that ended up reposting this video. So my first three years in real estate have gone far better than I could have ever possibly imagined. Today, I run a team of about 20 agents. I make more money than I had ever imagined possible for myself. I just recently bought what I would consider to be my dream home. And although all of that is, you know, amazing, it wasn't exactly a smooth sailing type of ride. It was a very bumpy ride and continues to be. So how did I get here? I got my real estate license in August of 2021. And leading up to that decision, I had been a plumber for about eight and a half years. And unfortunately, pretty much all of the skills that I learned in those eight and a half years were now not transferable over to the job that I actually wanted to do, which was be a real estate agent. Now, although that was the case, one thing that was transferable was my grit. Pretty much any trade is a very difficult profession to be in. It requires a lot of mental fortitude, um, obviously the physical ability as well. You know, the trades requires a ton of mental and physical strength to actually continue to do that job. You have to put up with a lot of BS and real estate is similar in a lot of ways. You know, in the trades, uh, especially me, I was a service plumber, things would go wrong. You have to figure out why it's going wrong. And just when you think you've got the answer, something else goes wrong. And real estate's very similar in a lot of ways. So I quit my six figure job, which was plumbing and went into real estate full time. I guess you could call it cold turkey. And in the beginning, I was extremely lost. I had no idea what to do. I was basically just throwing stuff at the wall until eventually something stuck. I was making 50 to 75 cold calls a day, posting two to five videos a day, and then I would go door knocking, uh, maybe once or twice a week. And even the videos that I was posting on social media, I didn't really have any direction. I was just kind of posting stuff everywhere, like LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, like every platform that I could post something on, I would post. And during this time period, I was actually so stressed out that I ended up getting this weird, like bladder illness. Won't go into too much detail, but essentially it ended up with me going and seeing 50 doctors over the span of a year and a half and specialists and everybody and ended up shoving a camera up my Johnson. And it was just freaking terrible. The reason why I know this happened because of stress is because I actually a year later went and got my testosterone tested because I thought I was going to go get some, you know, what do you call it? TRT or something like that, like a year later. And my testosterone came in too high. And I asked the doctor, what? Why is it last year that my testosterone was so low? And he told me, well, you know, you're probably really stressed out. So not that any of that matters, but I'm just saying to this day, the hardest decision that I ever did or the hardest thing that I ever had to do was quit my full-time job and then jump into real estate. Now back to real estate, I was making the cold calls. I was shooting the videos. I was door knocking and about a month and a half in, I got super lucky because my fiance's dad decided that he was going to sell his home that he had lived in for 30 years, which the market was good. I ended up selling it and then he bought a townhome. So those first two deals were served to me on a silver platter. And I'll forever be grateful for that because that allowed me, it was a great learning experience. I could take those confidence into the next deals. And then around the second week of October, I had now been in the business for about two whole months. I went to a presentation center for a presale condo project. Your market, but they, you know, they might be called something different. I know in the States in Toronto, I think they call them pre-construction or new construction. We call them pre-sale. I went to a pre-sale center and I ended up shooting a video, just like a bunch of different clips of what the show units look like, which what I now know today is actually called a property tour video. Back then I didn't think I was shooting a property tour video. I was just 
showcasing this property to social media. I didn't actually realize that was a strategy that people do. So I shot this video of these condos out in a city called Mission in my market. And I ended up getting a whole bunch of leads from this video. And then I ended up booking seven appointments into the sales center and seven people showed up and four people ended up buying in about the span of an hour and a half one afternoon. And that's when I kind of started doing the mental math and I was like, wow, I just made basically three or four months worth of my old jobs income in the last hour and a half. And that moment was the first time that I'd actually seen any tangible result from all of the work that I had been putting in. All the thousands of calls, all the door knocks, all the videos, everything that I was doing finally materialized and I had gotten a result. So after that, I pretty much didn't change anything I was doing. I was making the calls, I was doing all the same things that I was doing until about December when another Maple Ridge presale came up. Same thing happened, went and shot a video, had a whole bunch of leads, and this time I ended up selling six units in this Maple Ridge pre-sale. And that's where things kind of changed for me. That's where I pretty much stopped cold calling, stopped door knocking, stopped everything that I was doing and just realized social media is what I need to be doing. And I doubled down on social media. So now going into the start of 2022, I started putting out three TikToks a day, minimum. And then I would repost them to every platform, obviously aside from TikTok or sorry, LinkedIn. And I started getting a lot of recognition locally. It seemed like half the time when I went somewhere in a public setting, somebody would always recognize me, whether it was the gym, the restaurant, the grocery store, wherever I went, half the time, somebody would come up to me and be like, oh, hey, bro, I like watch your TikToks. I really like your stuff, and et cetera, et cetera. And then I started getting recognition from like local businesses. Like the news had me on, CBC had me on for a segment. Global News brought me on a couple times. Narcity did a piece on me. Uh, people started wanting me to get on their podcasts. And this was a massive adjustment for me coming from a trades background. I didn't think that I would ever be somebody that gets recognized in public for shooting real estate videos. I didn't even shoot videos. Like I'm not a social media person. I never posted on social media before real estate. So it was a bit of a weird feeling. Uh, obviously positive, but different. So anyways, going into 2022, I believe March of 2022, we started the podcast called the Big Deal Real Estate Podcast. Now, unfortunately, I don't actually shoot that podcast anymore today. It got really great views. A lot of people here locally listen to it religiously, but after about 14 months, we decided to stop shooting it because it costs about 2000 bucks a month. It didn't really do anything to get me business. It did a lot for my recognition locally and I guess my status, but in terms of actually selling real estate and making money, we just decided that there was probably other things that I could be putting that money and time into that would yield me better results. And in hindsight, I kind of wish that we continued to do that podcast because it probably would have blown up by now, but who knows what would have happened. Regardless, after that Maple Ridge presale, I pretty much stopped all forms of outbound prospecting and I was 100% social media at this point. I was shooting property tours, market updates, marketing listings, every video you could think of, even like dancing ones and whatever it was, I was shooting every single type of video that you could think of and I was doing it at very high volume. And in that first full year I had my license, so August 2021 to August 2022, I ended up closing 57 transactions. Now, full disclosure, I was on a team and I was paying a split to my team lead, so not all of those 57 transactions went right into my pocket. However, the caveat to that is that I had literally zero marketing expenses. I had pretty much zero expenses all around. The only thing I paid for was my gas and my desk fees. And funny enough, at the beginning of the year, I had actually wrote down on a piece of paper, like Bart Simpson on the chalkboard, like 500 times. I will do eight deals my first year in real estate. I will do eight deals my first year. I will do eight deals. I am doing 57 deals, so pretty hilarious. So although I had done 57 deals, my first full year in real estate, 2022 started to become a really difficult year for me. And that started around June, 2022. So if you guys remember, at least in my market here in Vancouver and the lower mainland and the Fraser Valley, the market had tanked pretty much 30% in some areas from 
February to June of 2022. The Bank of Canada started raising rates in March, but prices were pretty much on a free fall since the second week of February. And during this time, I actually had two transactions that never ended up closing. And that was about 30K in commissions that was never paid to me. It was a lot of sleepless nights, um, no fault of my own, but obviously worried for my client, worried that they were gonna come after me because obviously, you know, what do you do when you lose a bunch of money? You sue the realtor, right? So I was worried about that the whole time. And yeah, it was a lot of sleepless nights and it was very tough and very stressful. And I had another deal of mine that ended up closing, but was very similar. It was three months of thinking that it wasn't going to close and extensions after extensions and using different mortgage brokers and this and that before it finally got done. And there was a whole bunch of really, really, really tough conversations that needed to happen during this time. And obviously I didn't have a ton of experience at this point in my career career to deal with these things. And I was waking up every morning with a pit in my stomach. Then from about July, 2022 until March, 2023, the market was completely dead. I think I literally sold one house during this time period. So I went from 57 sales to one house. And this was extremely scary. And it forced me to go back to cold calling, door knocking, and all of the conventional methods of prospecting on top of what I was already doing with the social media. And again, this time period sucked, was extremely stressful and extremely scary, but something good did come from it. And that something good that did come from it was me starting a YouTube channel, September of 2022 called That Agent Kelly. It's my client attraction channel, which I think is at about 1700 followers right now. And I haven't made an absolute killing off of that channel, but it forced me to learn a whole bunch of skills that has now formed me into somewhat of a well-rounded entrepreneur that I otherwise probably wouldn't have done had things kept going the way that they were going before that time period. With the skills that I have learned shooting these YouTube videos, I can now put together courses and training programs. I can build lead captures on top of these platforms and the eyeballs that I'm getting on them. I've learned how to write scripts better, write better in general. And then again, that helps me with my marketing and shooting videos on short form and just all around improving my skills, marketing skills, and just becoming a better entrepreneur. YouTube requires you to have so many skills to actually see any type of success on it. Talking on camera, script writing, editing, idea generation, calls to action, lead capture, marketing, hooks, titles, thumbnails, so many things. Now, although the market was awful in 2022, I don't actually solely blame the market. As you guys know, I don't drink or smoke or do any of that stuff. And that's not always the person that I was. I used to be a partier and I actually dropped my vices May 9th of 2020 for the first time. And since then, my life has pretty much just gone upwards in a straight trajectory for the most part. However, because real estate was going so well for me at this point, I figured, hey, I basically quit drinking to, you know, give myself 100% focus so I could focus on real estate. Real estate's going really well. Let's try drinking again. So June 2022 is when I started drinking again. And then oddly enough, that pretty much lines up exactly with my business completely tanking through the basement floor. And by the way, I don't have a drinking problem. Drinking does to me exactly what it does to everybody else. I just think that most people don't actually realize the negative effects that drinking has on their life because they don't stop drinking for long enough to realize those effects are even happening. It fogs your mind, it ruins your sleep, your motivation, and distracts you. So I just blame the combination of me drinking along with the market being bad for my absolutely terrible performance in the back end of 2022. I then quit all of my vices once again, November 19th, 2022, and haven't touched it since. So going into 2023, I had done one deal in the previous six months. I had about 18,000 followers on TikTok and 3,500 followers on Instagram and maybe a couple hundred followers on YouTube. In the full calendar year of 2022, I think I managed to do just over 40 deals with literally all of those coming from February to June of 2022. Again, this was all, you know, very emotionally draining. There was no money coming in for the foreseeable future. And the narrative at the start of 2023 was that Canada was going to enter a recession by March or May or April or sometime in spring, the economy was going to collapse and the real estate market was going to crash. So the, the tone of 
the beginning of 2023 was overall very negative and we just came from a very, very negative market. However, a positive to this is that because I had stopped drinking, vaping and doing all the other crap that I was doing, I had lost a lot of weight and I looked much, much better by about March, April of 2023. Now, this obviously doesn't directly sell real estate. However, it improved my confidence. Therefore, it improved my camera presence and all of my videos across social media were getting a lot more views again. So during this time, I had noticed that other cheaper markets in Canada were performing very, very well. Calgary being one of them. Calgary has been on an absolute rip to the upside since about late 2021 and has no signs of stopping in the near future. But I never really liked the idea of buying an investment property in Calgary. So I was looking into other markets where I then found a small city about four hours away from Vancouver called Kamloops. I then found a pre-sale project in Kamloops, condos, and I ended up selling three of those in February. They were all like 300 grand, very small deals. And I had to split them with a Kamloops realtor just because he brought me those deals. But at the end of the day, I was getting deals done and that felt amazing after six months of basically nothing happening. And I actually sold those three units by shooting a green screen TikTok video, just kind of mulling over the project and the starting prices and blah, blah, blah. And I had about 50 people reach out to me and I sold three of them. And then my fourth deal, believe it or not, was a townhome in Calgary. Now I did not choose the project, but I had a client that really, really wanted to buy something in Calgary and hats off to him. He's made a whole bunch of money on that investment. So he was right. I was wrong, but I did sell a townhome in Calgary. So my first four deals in 2023 weren't even in my own market because my own market sucks so bad. And then by the middle of March, we had a couple good inflation reports and the bond market completely tanked through the basement floor and people were getting fixed rates under 5% again. So the spring market of 2023 was another amazing market and I probably sold about 30 homes from February to July. And again, I thought that I had, you know, weathered the storm, All the bad times were over. I had figured this real estate thing out. I am now off to the races. Well, I wasn't because then again in the back half of 2023, the market completely tanked once again and was completely dead for the back half of 2023 once again. The last five months of 2023 were pretty much identical to the last five months of 2022. The only difference this time is that I managed to sell about seven or eight homes, I think in the last back half of that year by the grace of God, because they were all very, very rocky deals that required me to talk my clients off a ledge, meet everybody in person, and they required a lot of my time to get those done. And then in the back half of 2023, the bond market completely rocketed again. And by October of 2023, fixed rates had gone from basically 4.8% to nearly 7%. And if you're watching this from the US, our rates here in Canada are typically about 1% higher than your rates. So at, you know, our, us being 7%, you guys were, you know, 8%. But our home values are like double. And in October, I took what I would say was probably the biggest risk of my life. And a I bought a $1.06 million home, dream home, with a 7% interest rate. I took another massive risk. I had to liquidate an investment property of mine and I bought the dream home. And this dream home has a mortgage of about 5,500 bucks a month. And at the time, this was a completely unfathomable expense for me. I had no idea how I was going to pay this, but I knew that if I'm going to buy the house that I want, it would have to be in a market that was completely crap. And even in that market where nobody was buying and the market was completely dead, I still had to compete with three other people. So I know if this home was listed today, there's no chance that I'd be able to buy it. I made another huge bet on myself that I was somehow going to be able to figure this out and pay this mortgage. Now I was wondering, how am I going to pay this mortgage? And I came to the conclusion that I was going to have to do things a bit differently than the way that I was doing them. I had to play bigger. If I was going to do the social media thing, I had to go bigger. I had to get more views. I had to get more followers. I had to blow it up. And I always had this idea of shooting a listing video in Punjabi because I knew a white guy speaking Punjabi would probably go viral. I think it would be an easy viral. And I knew a little bit of Punjabi from playing on a Punjabi soccer team growing up, but obviously I was worried that this video might be construed the wrong way and people would think that I'm being like discriminatory or whatever the case may be. So I never shot that video. But because I now had this big mortgage payment coming up and my back was against the wall, I figured, you know what, screw it. Let's throw the Hail Mary. Let's shoot the video. Let's see what happens. So right at the end of November, 2023, going into December, I shot 
a Punjabi listing video and posted it. This video went insanely viral. I think I got 1.5 million views just across my TikTok and Instagram, but then all of these pages reposted it. People were making memes out of it. It probably got well over 10 million views across all of the pages that ended up reposting this video. And just from that video alone, my Instagram went from about 5,000 followers to 12K. And then December, 2023, I ended up selling basically six or seven homes. I think it was six, uh, just in December. And I ended up at the end of 2023 making just under 300K, which it's not amazing by any means. There's a lot of people out there making way more money than me. My expenses are pretty high, so it's nothing too crazy. But given the fact that 2023 was pretty much the worst year in the history of ever for realtors, I'll take it. And by the end of 2023, I now had 36K TikTok followers, 12K on Instagram, and about 1,200 on YouTube. Now, going into 2024, I leaned into this Punjabi thing because it seemed to be going really, really well. And the way that social media works is once you find something that's working, you keep your finger on the pulse, you do not take it off. And during the beginning of the year of 2024, it seemed like everything I touch turned to gold. Every video I shot went viral. Every listing that called me, I signed. I sold 10 homes in the first two months and I picked up literally 20 listings. And literally everywhere I went, uh, I got recognized. People would come up to me, talk to me, they'd ask me for pictures, they want me to FaceTime their wives or their brother or their son or their friends or their buddies or whatever. And it got to the point that when I left the house, like go to Walmart and grab dinner, sometimes I would literally like put on a hat and my hood to try to hide my face. Not because I don't like the attention. I obviously love the attention, but you know how it is. Sometimes you just want to like not talk to anybody and go to Walmart. And every single time I went there, somebody would see me and come up to me and talk to me. So I literally started like doing the Eminem thing where I'd like hide my face and put on a hood and stuff like that just to go in, grab my chicken breast, and then leave. But it was completely insane. I literally felt like a celebrity. I'm a celebrity. So everything, again, was going much better than expected. I'm riding this insane high. Got a new house, making a bunch of money. I'm freaking famous. I have a bunch of listings. And then, again, boom, market completely dies in the middle of February. And here we are today. I have about 23 listings. None of them are selling. Everything is just sitting there. My views have fallen off a cliff across all platforms. And once again, I'm broke, but I know the future is bright. So here are the lessons that I learned in my first three years as a real estate agent, technically two years and eight months. Number one, you're pretty much always gonna be broke. Doesn't matter how much money I make, uh, I always have no money because it's invested into the business or assets, or it's never just sitting in my bank account and Every month, you know, it's money out, large amounts of money out. So you just get used to constantly being on the hunt and constantly not having safety. Two, it's going to be way harder for way longer than you ever could have possibly imagined. I feel like I have been weathering the storm forever at this point and it's still stormy outside. Number three, your ability to handle the emotional ups and downs of entrepreneurship is going to determine the level of success that you see. Most people are smart enough and capable enough to be extremely successful entrepreneurs, but they cannot handle the emotional ups and downs. And I've seen a lot of agents who would have been successful leave the industry because of exactly this. Obviously, being able to do this paired with consistency will lead to success. Number four, just enjoy the journey. You are creating your story. You can't be a hero without overcoming. So when you're in the thick of it, just understand that this is a part of the story and that your brand, what you're actually building, your personal brand, can't be strong without a strong story. And number five, this is a very big one and my biggest mistake is you need to build your database. Put every single contact that you come across via social media, in life, whatever, into a CRM and make sure you organize it properly. You will need to have a database to grow a sustainable business. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, like this video. And if you would like to partner with me, if you're a real estate agent, I got a link in my description where you can book yourself into my calendar. I'm that Agent Kelly. I'll make moves to move you. Peace.